Hello everybody, this is Party Petey and welcome to another special episode of casting. This is your caster and master, Party Petey, <laughs> here Party casting Petey. game numero dos of Nice Doom Doom's Win Radiant Victory. Doom That's what it is. Um, basically, I was uh, searching around and I have a friend who said, cast this tier 7 Battle Cup game. So I was like, alright, I'll do it after I play some Battlefield. And uh, here we are today, band. casting that exactly. And it looks like the Dire, as the first band here, will pick out the Slark. Maybe they went into last game and they're like, this guy was super good at Slark. Oh my gosh, guys, we got to ban him. So it will be... Oh, well, it bans the Mirana too. Okay, they had plenty of time to go ahead and look at the last game, which is uh, fantastical. So Radiant just going to stick with personal bans at this point. And they do ban out the Naga. As the uh, first ban here, and Omni Knight, uh, just another personal ban, and maybe it was uh, maybe it was something from their last game. Who knows? Um, I'd love to be able to check. Templar assassin. All right, hang on. It looks like eggs. <laughs> I don't know what that is. That is so funny. Templar assassin is actually going to be the first pickup here, which is probably not the best idea as a first pickup here. Maybe this is why you won, Craig. They first picked a core, huh? That's definitely not what you do, especially if it's a Templar Assassin. The only first pick core you should be taking is most likely a Baseless Void or a friggin' like Ancient Apparition into Huskar. But even then, that's still way too risky. So Radiant, they have plenty of time to go ahead and figure out how they want to counter out their first core already. And what's the number one counter to a Templar Assassin? Dot damage. That's more than the, um, more than Orb of Venom. Venom so, and <laughs> there you go, guys. The number one counter to anything involving Templar Assassin. Tick damage. That is the Venomancer. Venomancer is definitely one of the number one counters to Templar. And it's actually considered one of the more versatile uh, characters or heroes or both. In uh, probably all of Dota 2, as it could be played as support, core carry, and hard carry, probably not a hard support. Actually, there's a couple roles that do that really well. There's also Ricky, but Ricky was originally a support. Venomancer had this sort of lineup build for a long time. So, the next to that, they do pick up their off lane, being the Dark Seer. So now the Dire are going to find out what exactly they want as their next pick and or ban. And uh, hopefully we will see some uh, some good hero going out, obviously. I mean, it's a 27-minute game, I think, is how much it's said. So, actually, you can look down here. It's apparently 48 minutes. Why is it 48 minutes? Oh, you know what? We probably stayed in the idle screen for, like, five minutes is probably what happened here. Of course, the picking picking and banning phase is always, like, 10 minutes. They take Silencer. This is These are some weird pickups here. Why would you pick up Silencer against a Venomancer? Venomancer spamming spells quick enough will just take off last word near nigh immediately. So, um, I don't know exactly what that pickup was for. I guess I'll see it when it comes to the game, but I don't I don't see it. I don't see it. So Venomancer and Darkseer picked up for the side of the Radiant. The Dire uh, will ban out or the Radiant will ban out the Ricky. Dire, maybe to ban out another personal ban of their own, if they ever so pleased. But it looks like um, looks like we might be dipping into something here. They could go into the reserve time and figure out what are they drafting. And, of course, I bet the same. They, <laughs> they ban out the other dot damage based carry. So it looks like they just really don't like the fact that they picked up a Venomancer as their first pickup. I'd be angry, too, if my, if my first core got countered immediately. I'd be really angry. But, uh, no, that is not the case. So they ban out the Viper. And Radiant, now what are they going to ban out for their next Five setup here? Good question, Petey. Uh, I have no idea. Because they p first picked a Templar Assassin and a Reserve Silencer. Time. This is probably not even going to be a Core Silencer. Or no, this is probably going to be a Core Silencer. So uh, we're going to try and figure out what exactly that's going to be here as the Radiant will dip into the Reserve Time for the ban phase here. Is this still Mod Packs? This isn't still Mott Pax. Is this Mott? Why is his name Chief? Being weird, man. 
Actually, I forgot that you can't switch. You can't switch in between. So yeah, they do ban out the Sand King. They ban out a really good off lane that's just been really strong in the Dota series. Yeah. Dota scene. There, that's the word. For the past couple years here, so or past couple months, more or less. And Tinker will be the return ban out. Maybe something they just didn't want to deal with themselves. And the Radiant, I don't see taking them themselves either with the uh, Nether Wards. Or, uh, Ven Awards. It's actually really quiet now. Now it's like really Ten awkward. Seconds remaining. Nope, nope, okay, there's people talking. It was just talking really loudly. Five seconds remaining. And it will be Radiant trying to figure out what exactly they want as their next ban. They'll dip into the, or pick up actually. Reserve the um, uh, they do have their technical supports. Darkseer's not exactly a support, so this will be the off lane indefinitely. And um, Radiant taking their sweet, sweet time to figure out what exactly they want as their next uh, core here. As they already countered out the Templar Assassin uh, pretty darn easily. And Silencer to be next uh, next on that little ban list there. What are we going to see here for the next ban? I have no idea. Spirit Breaker. Will be Spirit Breaker Dying going to be the next big. pick up here instead? The Spirit Breaker Ten will be the pick up here. Most likely, he's going to be thrown on top of the Dark Seer, or with a, on top Five of with the Dark Seer orb. Remaining. So it's going to deal quite a bit of damage, just roaming around, being able to drop as much damage as possible on top of, of the, the unwearing light. team. And it looks like Radiant Keeper of the Light, Yodel Makotal, is going to be the other pick up for the Dire. So um, that's good on them for that. Um, I don't really see really Ten what else the Radiant really need remain. to pick here. They have the number one counter to Templar Assassin, Spirit Breaker, Five a massive Bash character remain. that can counter out the Keeper Travel and the Keeper Teleport, and then Silencer. Um, Reserve I don't really see why they picked up Silencer, but uh, they did. But they did. So Silencer not really going to be a good Night proving Stalker. for them. It will be Night Stalker going to be the return Dire pickup Team here, big. which uh, is not that bad of an idea either. In fact, probably going to be one of the better pickups here as it'll silence Silencer, which is the number one counter to a Silencer, is Silence. That's that's actually that's pretty much it. Silence is literally the number Ten one counter to Silencer. Remaining. So not. Not too Five bad of a pickup indefinitely. Remaining. Plus, it could still go core. And it can still go off lane if it ever so needed. Reserve time. So that's what that is. We're gonna see what exactly the next lineup will be here. What will the uh, dire poorly pick again this time? And um, yeah, I mean, I don't really know what to say about this, guys. It's just like I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what they're going to pick here. They are going to go into the reserve time, though, as it is going to be... I mean, they have a Templar Assassin, a Silencer, and a Kotal. They're still really lacking some sort of beef. Some sort of meat in their team that ends up holding the team together for fights. So, uh, maybe a Tide Hunter will be probably the best pick up here. If not a Tide Hunter, then, um... Tide Hunter. Well, I mean, there's... There's Tide Hunter. I was going to say maybe something ban. like uh, Disruptor, but I think that's banned. No, it's not, actually. So, I mean, they do pick up a Tide Hunter. That is beef, actually. If not that, there would have been Axe, and they would have ran Silencer as a support. But um, and now it's going to be ben the Radiant deciding what remaining. exactly they want as their last set of bands. Uh, 24 Five seconds in their reserve time, whether they dip into it or not, is the question. Reserve time. It's 5k plus? Okay. So that means Mod Packs is 5k plus. Alright. That means you're 5k plus. How are you 5k plus? Yeah, whatever. It will be Juggernaut going to be the first ban out here for the... Or the last ban out for the Radiant. The Dire 
plenty of time to take whatever their last band is. But of course, Juggernaut, a really solid Ten staple band. Remaining. No matter what the enemy team is going to pick, it's actually just super friggin' Five strong. No matter remaining. what the case will be. <clears throat> they ban out a Legion command. Dire what is with these pick. bans and picks? Most of which have nothing to do with the enemy lineup. Tidehunter, sure, there's no channels that's actually going to interrupt them, and they're so durable on the side of the rating, I don't think they need to worry about that. Ten and then, um... Seconds remaining. And then there's, like, I mean, the picks Five on the side of the dire are actually just straight-up terrible. And the fact that they picked up a Templar Reserve Assassin the as the first carry, as the first pick, and then instantly countered out by one of the number one counters... The other one being Viper, the other number one counter. It's a Viper is actually a little bit better, but number one counter, Venomancer, thrown down on Templar Assassin right at the start, and then they pick up a Dark Seer, a really good off lane character, and they pick up Radiant a freaking Phantom Assassin. Pick. Next to that, it's going to be yeah, how are your friends, 5K? Some of your friends here don't Strong exactly pick spirit. the best sort of abilities to use. Oh, man. But it looks like Storm of Spirit will be the last pick here for the side of the Radiant. So it's going to be Templar Assassin, Silence, Keeper of the Light, Tide Hunter, Phantom Assassin. Templar Assassin, actually. Versus Phantom Answer, Dark Seer, Spirit Breaker, Night Stalker, and Storm Spirit. So it looks like we're going to see... Um, I'm going to... I guess this is like Canadian Dota 2. Oh, no, that's China. What is that? What is that symbol? We'll find out the name of the teams in a second. But of course, this is game numero dos, the second game into the f into the uh, battle cup, which means this is the semifinals. After this, uh, Craig's team gets to move to the grand finals. Uh, as always, we will start with the side of the radiant. We have Venomancer with like no no set actually. Prepare if I just look at this Venomancer on my desk and then look at that Venomancer, yeah, no, it's it's the same. Venomancer is going to be piloted by Craig. Meanwhile, Spirit Breaker is going to be piloted by County Square. Night Stalker is going to be ca uh, piloted by I'm using tilt controls. Spirit Breaker going to er, oh my god, Storm Spirit being piloted by Zero One, and Danks here going to be piloted by Chief. And then, meanwhile, Phantom Assassin going to be piloted by Emmanuel, Keeper of the Light going to be piloted by Rem, Tide Blunter going to be piloted by Doodle Fuck, Templar Assassin going to be piloted by Blank, and Silencer is going to be piloted by. Enoch, or Phoenix. Phoenix. We're going to stick with Phoenix. As we see everybody getting out to their lanes here, we have all the items up on everybody. Eight tangos, two tangos. It's going to be four tangos, nice soccer, six tangos, and full regen available for the Dark Seer. This is, might be a solo Dark Seer. I don't know. No, actually, it's Spirit Breaker. Spirit Breaker is going to be Rome, actually. So, what is this, actually? What are the lanes? Let's see. Let's see if we can get this just by guessing, but it looks like there could be something going on down here in the bot. Tilt controls. Finding the rest of the team here. Um, I don't think this top rune is going to be achievable as Storm Spirit's going to lose all of his mana. The battle begins. No, actually, he still walks away with quite a bit of mana, but not a lot. And um, Darks here getting the top rune. Didn't actually need it, but uh, he has it. But, um, alright, so the lanes are going to be set here. It looks like Spirit Breaker will be Rome with, um, Chief, who is now Mott Paxed. I'm pretty sure he's Mott Paxed as Darkseer. Meanwhile, in the mid, it's actually Night Stalker in the mid versus Templar Assassin. Is she using half of the blood set and half of the new one? Yeah, okay, that's really dumb looking. And um, in with the Templar Assassin in the mid, meanwhile in the safe lane, it's going to be the Storm Spirit versus uh, Phoenix. Or Storm Spirit and the Venomancer versus Silencer and the Tide Blunter. And of course in the top, it's going to be PA versus... Oh god, this is actually a really bad lineup for PA against a double melee with a Dark Seer being the primary melee in the lane. You can expect to get zero farm in this lane, sweetheart, because you ain't getting nothing. 
Tidehunter trying to confirm some damage on the Venomancer. So you can see that it is going to be the right click that's going to be Spectre for this Venom because he is getting a lot more aggression on this lane compared to the rest of the team being the rest of the team Storm Spirit. Um, looks like Tidehunter was actually planning on going for a solo lane, Iron Talon, and a Tango set. Meanwhile, with the Silencer, also level 1, though, it looks like it was just going to be a solo Tidehunter, but they're sticking with with uh, dual lanes due to, due to 1. So, Silencer, he's going to buy a TP, and he's probably going to head on out here. Craig getting extremely low. He might actually die here if he sticks around too long. Ping is going to go out, and it looks like the Storm Spirit's going to suffer some mana damage, or some silence. But he's getting all of his mana back. He hasn't used it aggressively. Uh, mostly defensively, actually. Mostly defensively. Mostly defensive. Wow, what a bomb. What a bomb. It's going to be 11 and 2. No kills at the 2 minute mark. Although County Square taking quite a bit of damage, but not enough to kill him here. Meanwhile, in the bot, though, Venomancer just slowly tickling down the Tidehunter. Now he's going to start uh, tick tickling uh, Phoenix. Chief up in the top, trying to apply some damage to uh, the manual here, but you're not going to find it. I hope this is not a Battle Fury PA, because a Battle Fury PA in this lineup is actually not going to do you anything. It is going to be the charge. The Keeper has been revealed in the lane. Mana break. First hit bash. Is it there? It was not. Andy Square will just go ahead and take a little bit of mana drain and uh, move on with his life. Six tangos. Six. He could dive as much as he wanted if he ever wanted to. Meanwhile, Templar Assassin, Regen Rune in the mid, basically free farming it up. Uh, actually, first engagement down here in the bot, Tidehunter trying to go on Storm Spirit. He's got boots, so he's just going to run up at him at this point, with uh, Venomancer just hiding out in the mid. Or in the jungle, actually. I think he's stacking. No, he's, he's, he's fighting. Yeah, he's fighting. Actually, that's really smart. Overhead ward fight. He's to get his level 3. Looks like everyone's going to try and resume their aggression here. Storm Spirit trying to build defensive so he can actually just live in the lane a little bit longer. But, um, Manuel also just struggling extremely well. Looks like it's actually going to be the charge and a salvo thrown on the county. Still going off. Still going off. Still going off. First hit bash on the keeper. That salve, though, was not interrupted, guys, so he got the full effect of that salve. Because they did not try to fight him. Mid is missing, however. I don't know where he is. Actually, he's getting the first blood on the bot rune. First night, or on the bot, bot rune. Bot lane. Night Stalker to claim the first blood. Or not first blood. Storm Spirit to claim the first blood. Night Stalker to help claim it. Maybe trying to get a rotation on the Templar Assassin. Radiance Middle Tower Fake is GG under being attack. called. See, so hate it when people do this, so... Maybe I'll mute the chat later if it continues to occur. Silence are trying to farm up as much as you can while the, uh... Who do I report? But it looks like there's definitely no way the Storm Spirit will escape from this. Silence to claim the kill. 700 gold total. 346. Being dropped. Another charge going out. They want to get a first hit bash. Is it there? Not there. And not there either. Uh, what was it, 15%? 17%? What a percentage attack. number. 17%. Like, who determines that stuff? Who determines 17%? Like, it couldn't have been, like, 12%? Like a normal number? No, 17% for Bash Chance. Dyer's top tower Templar is trying really attack. hard to get that last hit in Radiant's the mid. But it is a 38-4. On the on the uh, darks here to the 31 and 5, 23 and 10 storm actually doing extremely well to the 15-2 tide blunter. So, I have not seen a safe lane storm in quite a while though, so this will be an interesting lineup to, uh, to say for the least. And uh, County Square trying to get in there, just wants to tickle those creeps with his hammer. Yeah, there there you go, tickle those creeps. 
There's that first hit bash. First hit bash. It's such a good meme, but it's not a meme. Uh, Tidehunter, I don't know what you're doing being extremely low and only one spike in shell. But, um, it's not gonna, it's not gonna help you here. Damage block 12. And he's at 73. Radiance middle tower That's actually a kill from Tide. Or, uh, Tide's gonna go down, yeah. That's a kill there. Meanwhile, up in the top, Total getting extremely low. Spirit Breaker not the one losing the mana, though, but he is gonna be the target kill here. Charge. Not gonna find it. He didn't do it in time. For some reason, he stopped. Could have made it, actually. But it looks like um, PA is going to be scouted out by the Night Stalker. He actually hits a creep. He does not hit the PA. But he's gonna dive him anyway. He's like, I could do this all day. Boom! I'll lose my mana. There I go. Oh, I'm, he is gonna lose his life as well. He does still get the kill, though. Meanwhile, bottom. Tidehunter dies again to the storm. Was that Ravage? It was not Ravage. Alright, so it looks like the aggression is not really coming out here. It's... Oh, wait, hang on. What was happening? I saw him get really low. I had no idea what was happening here. Charge is going to go out. Spirit Breaker, is he going to complete it? Nope, Dyer's just used for a free TP. Is under attack. Although the TA is now in the mid. Or in the top, instead of mid. Silencer now in the mid. Instead. TA leading in the CS at 48 and 5 compared to Night uh to Yeah, compared to Night Stalker, who was the opposing mid at 17-3. Not exactly that beneficial for them. But it looks like it doesn't really matter, as uh, all the really all the radiant carries are building some pretty good items here. Uh Darkseer going into the mechanism first, so the Guardian Greaves will be the first pickup here. Storm Spirit, level 8. Tidehunter, not level 6 just yet. Another creep wave will do the trick. Tower is under attack. But, uh, lo and behold, there's no creep wave. Storm Spirit is like, I, wanna, I don't want to fight him. He's probably got it. Illusion going to be sent in. Big fight in the mid, actually. We see Venomancer taking the brunt of the damage. Night Stalker, for some reason, everyone's a little bit slow on realizing they're able to move. Bottle going to be used up here, Craig. Might just deny himself. Trying to find the suitable camp to kill himself with. No, he's just got TP back. Okay. He's got too much gold to lose. Will be the boot. Uh, will be the uh, coming in here. Silence is gonna go out, but the Kraken shell will be there to purge it in time. Ooh, perfect ravage. But uh, Spirit Breaker, lucky bash, lucky bash. Oh, Craig. Craig. Okay, no, that okay. Dark Seer Crash. Oh, that was great. That's great. Alright. Is the first hit bash gonna be there? Is the first hit bash gonna be... Oh, no. He's actually dead. He's dead. He actually had that... He actually had that scheduled like, way... Way before that uh, attempt there, so... Spirit Breaker to get the kill. Or Dark Seer actually to get the kill. Not even close to the rest of the team. Darkseer gets the kill. Gotta be careful though. Everybody else is coming in. Spirit Breaker. I have no mana. <laughs> Spirit Break charges out and loses Radiance all of his mana. Tower is under attack. Going nowhere. Going nowhere fast. I do see the silencer in the river, however, Chief. He's gonna throw the orb onto uh onto Breaker here. Maybe to try and find another kill. Actually, they have a double counter, I forgot. Ion Shell will deal damage too to break the shield. Radiant Charge is going to go out. They want to go on Phoenix. You're dead. This he takes quite a bit of damage. First, second hit bash, third hit bash. Oh. Oh. Dirty. Bash. 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 Wow, the bashes are terrible. Ha. Yeah, these bashes are actually bad. Why do you do you stop? He's actually he's honestly just being tickled. There it is. No uphill miss for that one. Radiant stock tower is under attack. Meanwhile, in the top, Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Nothing happened. Oh, Venomancer died in the top. Okay. Didn't use ult. 
Uh, might be going for the Radiance. I swear, Craig, if you're building Radiance. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. They're not Radiance. Um, not Radiance. What is it? Radiance middle tower. Well, please don't build Radiance attack. either. Um, Midas. That's the thing. I swear, if you're building a Midas, I, I really want to punch you, but I'm never gonna see you in my life. So I don't have a way to do that. Storm Spirit to escape through the bot here. He is gonna end up getting the kill on the Tide Hunter. It was not a forced ravage though, so still not a hundred percent bad. But um, still bad, of course, because he died. He lost quite a bit of gold. I didn't get to see it. Is that a Vanguard first on PA? Yes, it is a Vanguard first, so it's no Battle Fury. It's uh, 11, it's uh, 12 minutes. I still have the CS loaded up. Like a smart person. Dyer's it looks like the Templar Assassin's carrying in the lead CS here at 5-3, 5-2 on the Storm Spirit. 4-2 to follow on the Darks here. 3-6 on the PA. Night Stalker running at 3-5. It's funny because they're pinging the Tidehunter not to go there. Charge is going to go out. Tidehunter does have Ravage of Silence. Global Silence is going to be used as well. And it looks like Venomancer does not actually get hit by any sort of burst there. Night Stalker going to lose his mana, take a full brunt stun. It won't be enough to find the kill. He is dead for sure. Templar Assassin to claim it. Um, Tidehunter for... No, that was not worth it. It was definitely not worth it for uh, the side of the Radiant. Radiant's middle tower has been and they denied. even lost the tower. Venomancer actually gets the deny with the attack. baby Venom Ward. Oh, that was beautiful. Oh, that was beautiful. And it looks like Phantom Assassin's going to finish up her face boots. Face treads. Face boots. Radiant's and, um, middle tower is yeah, nothing really happening there. Mechanism finally built up on, um... Darks here. Mm, Danks here. Orca Malevolence built up for the Storm Spirit. Desolator is out on the Templar Assassin. So now we can finally go and look at the items here as the Midas is most likely going to be a vote for the Venomancer. Spirit Breaker is going to build boots. Wait, wait what? Why did you call the courier? Oh, Dust. Okay. He's building his boots. Um, Night Stalker possibly going obviously into the Ag's gem build. And then uh, Storm Spirit, Orchid Malevolence, Mechanism going into the Guardian Greaves on Darks here. Phantom Assassin going in straight for damage. Desi going to be the next pick. Actually, something happening up on top here. Silence is out on the Templar Assassin. He's taking quite a bit of dot damage. Emmanuel is actually not in the best location. That was not a glimpse or jump you wanted to do there. And uh, Silencer, he's here, but no global is available. He's like, I'm just going to wail on Storm Spirit a little bit. And uh, Whale on Storm Spirit, he will, but the mechanism was there, so he's all healed up. He's like, I'm killing you now. And that is four heroes dead. Three heroes dead, actually. And uh, <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, that was actually three heroes dead for sure. And, um, yeah, that, that happened. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Dyer's structures are fortified. So it looks like it's going to be an easy uh, jump here, as um, it's 14 minutes, 12 and 6, and uh, Craig in the Twitch chat talking about how pro he is at denying that tower, because he thinks he's pro. Uh, County Square will disjoint the charge, because they actually see the Tidehunter instead of the Ravage. Ooh, it does still go out. Oh, I felt that Ravage in my belly. But it looks like it doesn't really matter, as Tidehunter is going to go down. He purges off all the poison stacks, but there will a wall go down. Meanwhile, on the other side, Darkseer gets caught out by a Kotal Wave. It will be Craig. He's actually silenced up a little bit by County Square. He's going to charge out. He gets the charge out perfectly. No mana break on him this time. But Craig looks like he's in a bad spot. There's no ward to scout him. Actually gets clipped. Storm Spirit, though. Getting a kill on the Templar Assassin all the way down here in the bot, on the other hand. So still actually beneficial for the side of the Radiant indefinitely. Oh. Wait, what? How did they get more gold? Oh, whatever. That doesn't make any sense. But, um, I still thought that was a pretty good exchange. They lose the Darks here for 400 gold and 477 on the Storm. Maybe it was only calculating the things up in the top. I don't know. But it looks like it's pretty easy so far for the side of the Radiant. 
at 14-7, 16 minutes, and Storm leading at 8-1, with TA only leading at 6, and the uh, Arcs here leading at 5-4, and 5-1 out on the... Wait, are you really... It's a Shamulet, folks. He is going to go into his Shadow Blade. Smoke is going to go out. They want to find an aggressive kill. Craig, of course, being the pro player he is, was not caught in that smoke. And they're like, there's a player down bottom. He used his Ravage already, so there is no way that they're going to find a counter pickoff off this. Are they going to find Emmanuel? If they do, it's actually a really good pickoff. Smoke doesn't break, though. They don't know that Emmanuel is farming in the side shop. No, they're going to find Emmanuel because he's going to walk in the way. Oh no! <laughs> Emmanuel is definitely going to go down here. Spirit Breaker not even... Okay, there's the ult going out for Breaker. And that's a kill there. They're going to try and re-engage on this. There's so many Venom Wards. What is this Tide doing? He's staying outside. Looks like the ult is going to go out for Craig. Of course, Tide Hunter, the only person that's able to purge that thing off, is the only target for that. Although, meanwhile, Spirit Breaker taking quite a bit of damage. Is the Shamulet, is it going to save him? No, it won't. Total would actually get the finish off kill there instead. Meanwhile, in the mid, though, Craig stayed for a little bit too long. Uh, nothing else really happening. Awkward silence where I say nothing at all because I think somebody's saying my name. Pretty sure somebody is. But it looks like it's a uh, just super easy game for the Radiant here. Global Silence actually used for uh, controlling the Storm Spirit, but I don't think that would ever be worth it in any way, shape, or form or scenario to use it on a solo. Um, PA has no Basher, so I don't know why that was a why that was a possible option for them, but they they did it. It happened. Templar Assassin, he's hanging around this uh, Night Stalker who is actually a few seconds away from night, isn't it? 18 minutes? No, it's 20. Invisibility. Yeah, it's 20. He actually has darkness. He's actually going to try and turn on this. Is there a way that he can do it, though? Actually, I think this is a Glimmer Cape. No, it's not a Glimmer Cape. It's a Shadow Blade. What am I saying? Of course it's going to be Shadow Blade. But I'm answer. He's got Radiant Invis up, and he's going to go into the uh, Veil, being bottled up by the Night Stalker with the one bottle charge he's got. Meanwhile, in the bot, though, the first tower of the bot lane is going to be tickled ever so slightly. Darks here, they're looking for a slow. They, oh my gosh, no! Why would you solo ravage that? Because he could do that! Darks here is going to be able to escape. The mech is there. A solo ravage used for a Darks here is definitely not what you want to be using your ravage for. It looks like the fight's going to be right on top of the Spirit Breaker, who is actually going to die. And, uh, actually, there's no fight going on for that. So it looks like this is a uh, free exchange for the bot here. Actually, it looks like there is an engagement going on here. PA dives right on top of Venno. Extremely low Venno and dies. Night Stalker just chilling, chilling and willing, just sitting there with nothing at all. Looks like in the mid, though, Storm Spirit trying to find an engagement, not going to find anything. And um, all the TP rotates will be used to try and prevent the uh, up and coming fight from that. And it looks like. Um, the awkward silence, the brink in the moment where it's 10-5 uh, on the Storm Spirit, 8.2 on the Templar Assassin, 6-5 on the 6-6 six, six on 6-7 six, on the Dark Seer. Shadow Blade finally built up for the Night Stalker, so roaming capability is now accessible. The Aghanim Scepter, why did you use it in base? Why did you use it in base? Whatever. And it looks like Tidehunter um, on the brink of building a headdress. On the brink of a headdress. Number one item in Dota. Headdress. No, number one item in Dota is like definitely uh, raindrops. Pipe going to be built out. Templar Assassin trying to slow solo 
Slolo and Solo, this Roche. Um, don't think they saw it. They might have saw the side hunter. The Templar's ass not exactly having the easiest time of her life here. Roche actually being tickled for 200 HP every hit. So, not exactly a quick Roche. But they're like, TA has been missing this whole game. Night Stalker. Shadowblade. No, he's not going to find it. Not going to hear it. They're actually going to go on, to st on the uh, Darks here. Silencer denying the mid tower. Dark Seer, he does actually just throw Guardian Greaves. He's turning on this. There is a Ravage available. He does use it, but it's like, why? Global Silence going to be used out. The charge does not get canceled from that, as the charge is now here. And the Silence has now been turned off. Or turned off. It's no longer there. So, now it looks like, ooh, he's extremely low. Zeus ult now, not there. TA will pick up the Aegis. I think this could be a deny, though. Uh, 21, 22 minutes. The GG is probably going to be called eventually here. But, um, I don't know, actually. I, I can't remember what exactly the time was. Oh, wow, we still got a lot of ways to go. So we're waiting Dyer's ever so patiently. PA uh, building the Desolator, I believe. Courier going to go pick Dyer's up the last part right now. Bolt. Storm Spirit to take out the top tower. Maybe he's going to leave. Yeah, he's heading out now. And uh, we can go ahead and talk about items. That's just 22 minutes, 15 and 10. See if Venomancer and the Midas that I said, I swear if I saw him build, I'd punch him in the face one day. And um, now has the Veil of Discord, Spirit Breaker. Just roaming a lot, so not really building any items. Or Earn Shadow is not going to be available, actually, because Night Stalker already has one. Uh, Storm Spirit picked up a Bloodstone. Could be going Boots of Travel next. Who knows? Could just be a Sheep Stick. Or into the uh, Super Strong, whatever that item is called that I can't remember the name of. They are going to find at least one kill here. Yodel is definitely going to be the one going down here. Tidehunter staying, though. Yet again, he might be caught out. No, there's no way they're going to catch him at this point. They want to, though. They really want to. Sentry Ward is going to be thrown, and they are going to try their best. No, they do get the ward. Okay. Easy D ward. Easiest D ward of my life. I mean, yeah. Easiest D ward. The Aegis still sitting on the Templar Assassin, but this is getting a little bit too crazy as it's 13 on the Storm Spirit, and he's w just walking around with 3.5k. So. It's definitely uh, super good for them. Imagine if Templar Assassin traps were um, visible. That would make Dyer's Templar's traps like completely obsolete. Meanwhile, in the mid, it will be a fight. Chief taking quite a bit of damage. Is slow there? He actually guards Greaves. Silence super late, actually. He is going to be able to get out perfectly fine. And it looks like they're going to want to try and counter engage on this. It will be the burn going down the silence. Oh, no, that was uh, a Night Stalker. Night Stalker Knight. As Templar Assassin is now just chilling. Storm Spirit, though, taking out the last tier one. They did see blank, though. Look at that. Slowing. Okay, see, now that doesn't trigger it because it's only six damage. Which means Craig, yeah, only has two levels in it. It looks like this is going to be the fight of their lives here. Is it is going to be a Ravage. Silence not going to be there in time. They still get the Ravage out, and the Ravage is there. Spirit Breaker to get their first confirmed kill. Night Stalker to end up getting the second one on the Tide Hunter. It will be Templar Assassin's Aegis is going to go down here. Storm Spirit trying to take out Emmanuel, but he's just hitting him way too hard and way too much. Spirit Breaker, he's actually getting turned on by Emmanuel. Will he find the lucky hit? He will find it. Country or County still running extremely low health. Two heroes at extremely low health. PA is going to pause BM. Pause, and Templar Assassin trying to get the kill on the spirit breaker here and will he find it he will indeed find it so um it will be that 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 is what's happening there and uh four dead on the side of the other team here on the dire and the radiant capitalizing yet again off of this engage mint massive massive gold swing uh what is that uh, 17 hundo 18 hundo 18 hundo going to the way of the Radiant here. And the only one to fall is the Night Stalker. Of course, Spirit Breaker left the fight pretty... No, Spirit Breaker died too, actually. He just came back really, really dang quickly. And um, this will be an uh, easy exchange mid-tower here. The Echo Saber going to be the build-up item for Spirit Breaker here. And um, <laughs> Templar Assassin. <laughs> Templar Assassin running at 3k at the moment, walking around with it. Storm Spirit was in the pre the same boat the same time last time, but now it's BKP. Speaking of Storm Spirit, he will get the Spirit Breaker, actually. 
gets the kill on um, Tidehunter in the mid. The county, he wanted to find that last engagement there, but the Echo Saber now available if he decides to buy the last piece. Hurry up and do it. But, um, no, he is going to charge out. He really wants this TA, whose TP is actually on cooldown. The Wubuski, here is the charge. There is no shields available. He's actually silenced up. Shields are available now. Oh, reveals herself at the last second here. Lop and drop. He will end up going down. A lot of tick damage. Going to be the thing there. Templar Assassin. Uh, most likely a rage buyback. Sells all of her items to go and buy Divine and throw the game. No? Okay, she is buying a bunch of Dragon Lances. And is going to do nothing. I think this is where the GG actually gets called. A Templar Assassin has sold her items. And has done nothing about it. Bought back, sold her items. I think that is the end of the game. 22 and 11 at 26 minutes and 43 seconds. Um, I'm pretty sure PA could still solo carry defend this. She practically has been. So, uh, not too surprised there. Tide Hunter. What are you doing, man? They have a Storm Spirit. You can be caught out no problem. But it looks like that's not going to be the case. Blink Dagger smokes out on the Silencer. Global Silence is available, however. Chief just out here trying to farm up what he can. Go. Popping up. Charge. Not going to find any targets. Bot Tower will indefinitely be going down here. Mid already down a long time ago. But uh, Night Stalker on the brink of getting the Aghanim Scepter. Storm Spirit. Actually going to come in, and they're going to go for the Roche if it is up. It is not up, actually. So, um, not too surprised about their fight actions here. Of course, getting down to the nitty-gritty of it as it's 22 minutes. Uh, wow, 22 and 11 at 27 minutes. Uh, all the dire, all the radiant... All the Radiant carry is leading out really well. Templar Assassin actually had a pretty high net worth, but actually just literally threw the game by buying back, selling all of her items. And, uh, yeah. As you can see, the game is probably going to be considered over as everyone is saying GG easy mid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tidehunter. Probably one of the few defenders here. He actually purges off the uh, immunity there, but BKB is here to save the day. A Storm Spirit will pick off yet another kill here. Another kill going out. It will be the final call going out by somebody who might actually mean it this time. And that is the end of the game. 28 minutes. Is that the end? Is this the end? The Storm Spirit has 18,000 gold. They're not, they're not ending it. It's not ending. There it is! Finally! 10 seconds seems like a long time! That is the end of game number 2! Nice Doom's victory claim victory yet again over some really sad opponents. Templar Assassin clearly being fairly angry at that kill on bottom ends up throwing the game completely by selling all of her items, her buyback, and furthermore her dignity. Her dignity is probably the bigger one of all. Of, of, of them all! Now we are waiting ever so patiently for the server to send back the fact that this game has no end game stats. As, uh, because it's a really laggy, laggy, laggy mechanic that they have here. So, um, for those of you watching on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this casting session of Nice Doom's, vict or nice Doom's Victory, Victory number two out of three. We're going to see the next game here. Going underway ever so shortly. So hang on to your butts. And the pants that hopefully are covering your butts. This has been Party PD casting some Dota 2. And uh, we will see you next time as Party PD. Signing off. I do hope you enjoyed the video that you watched today. If you want to see more done by me or just done by anyone in general, please have a look around the rest of the channel. Leave a like, favorite, and subscribe on this video. And we will see you next time for some more Dota 2 based equipment and stuff. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you all next time.